Good morning, You Can Heal family. My name is Sheena. Thanks for uh, tuning in this morning and starting your day with me. So we're going to um, read today 2 Chronicles chapter 30. But before we get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about having boundaries for yourself when it comes to talking on the phone. So why am I bringing this up today? Let me tell you, if you wanted to know. On the day before yesterday, um, I dropped my daughter off to ballet and I got a phone call and it was my ex um, was coming through. And I chose not to answer the phone. And it was, it was a good decision for me. Um, some of you who have followed along on the channel have gone through... Um, some of the <laughs> what's the word the process with me as far as um moving away from that relationship even though i've been um, divorced for about going on four years but a lot of times what happens is when we get into these phone calls with our exes it tends to pull us back in and um I look at it this way, if an ex is calling you and you've decided not to block your phone, then a lot of times, and maybe not always, but maybe in most cases, it's just to kind of say something that'll hook you back into that um, pattern, you know, that process of wanting to feel the way you used to when you were in the relationship with them because honestly if they're calling and it's really something important especially if you share kids together or if there's some emergency they can leave a message right or they can <laughs> send a text so i guess it's, it's just kind of like a warning be mindful and set some boundaries for yourself as far as talking on the phone and um, know that just because someone's calling you, you don't have to answer. And and I don't know why um, that never dawned on me before I started my healing process. But it was always like, you know, when, when the dude calls, when the guy calls, the boyfriend calls, the husband calls, whoever, I got to answer the phone, you know, and I got to put up with whatever they've got going on on their end. And you don't have to do that. You get to decide who you talk to and when, you know, what you say and for how long you have these conversations. So that's just something that I just wanted to share with you. I don't know if it was helpful. I'm going to trust that, um, that it is. And just remember that you can set phone boundaries as far as when you talk to people, what time at night you take calls, what time in the morning you take phone calls. You know, don't, don't have people calling you all times of day and all hours of the night because it works for them or they want to disturb your peace you know, or dump on you. And this doesn't even have to be romantic relationships. This could be with friendships, coworkers, anyone, you know. So let's learn to set some boundaries with the telephone and um, not jump every time it rings, right? We can make sure that we're not busy. We're not interrupting the flow of our day, what we've got going on. You know, make sure you're in the right headspace, you know, looking at the person, <laughs> Usually most of us have the caller ID so we can see who's calling. Um, so we're not reactionary. We've really thought about some things we're going to say. And, you know, we've got the spirit of the Lord over us. And we're, we're ready to be, um, you know, prepared as far as coming, coming in with a conversation that makes sense that you're, you're coming from a good place. You're kind and you're loving and you're respectful and you're honoring yourself. So just don't get caught up on these reactionary phone conversations because you pick up really quick and then you're caught off guard. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to share this morning. I hope it's helped somebody. <laughs> now, before I read the Bible, I'm going to ask for prayer because you guys know I had the surgery and um, it was on my throat. <clears> they <throat> had to do some cutting there and my neck is just really sore more from just not being able to hold my neck back my head up and lean back all the way so it's just getting really stiff so just keep me in prayer about that and let's get to it 
the celebration of the Passover, Second Chronicles chapter 30. King Hezekiah now sent word to all Israel and Judah, and he wrote letters of invitation to Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim and Manasseh. He asked everyone to come to the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover of the Lord, the God of Israel. The king, his officials, and all the community of Jerusalem decided to celebrate Passover a month later than usual. They were unable to celebrate it at the regular time because not enough priests could be purified by then, and the people had not yet assembled at Jerusalem. This plan for keeping the Passover seemed right to the king and all the people, so they sent a proclamation throughout all Israel from Beersheba in the south to Dan in the north, inviting everyone to come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover of the Lord, the God of Israel. The people had not been celebrated, excuse me, the people had not been celebrating it in great numbers as prescribed in the law. At the king's command, messengers were sent throughout Israel and Judah. They carried letters which said, O people of Israel, remember, return to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, so that he will return to the few of us who have survived the conquest of the Assyrian kings. Do not be like your ancestors and relatives who abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and became an object of derision. As you yourselves can see, do not be stubborn as they were, but submit yourselves to the Lord. Come to his temple, which he has set apart as holy forever. Worship the Lord your God so that his fierce anger will turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your relatives and your children will be treated mercifully by their captors, and they will be able to return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful. If you return to him, he will not continue to turn his face from you. Oh, I like that. I really do. Because, you know, sometimes we think God's left. No, he hasn't gone anywhere. It's usually us, you know, who get distant to walk away, you know, who don't make that effort to spend time with him. Um, but he guarantees us if we return to him, he'll be right there. You know, he, he won't, he, he's never gone anywhere. So that that's comforting. Verse 10 says, the messengers went from town to town throughout Ephraim and Manasseh and as far as the territory of Zebulon. But most of the people just laughed at the messengers and made fun of them. However, some from Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulon humbled themselves and went to Jerusalem. At the same time, God's hand was on the people in the land of Judah, giving them a strong desire to unite in obeying the orders of the king and his officials who were following the word of the Lord. And so a huge crowd assembled at Jerusalem in mid-spring to celebrate Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. They set to work and removed the pagan altars from Jerusalem. They took away all the incense altars and threw them in the Kidron Valley. On the appointed day in mid-spring, one month later than usual, the people slaughtered their Passover lambs. Then the priests and Levites became ashamed, so they purified themselves and brought burnt offerings to the temple of the Lord. They took their places at the temple according to the regulations found in the law of Moses, the man of God. The Levites brought the sacrificial blood to the priest, who then sprinkled it on the altar. Since many of the people there had not purified themselves, the Levites had to slaughter their Passover lambs for them to set them apart for the Lord. Most of those who came from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulon had not purified themselves, but King Hezekiah prayed for them, and they were allowed to eat the Passover meal anyway, even though this was contrary to God's law. For Hezekiah said, May the Lord who is God pardon those who decide to follow the Lord, the God of their ancestors, even though they are not properly cleansed for the ceremony. And the Lord listened to Hezekiah's prayer and healed the people. So the people of Israel who were present in Jerusalem celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days with great joy. Each day the Levites and priests sang to the Lord, accompanied by loud instruments. 
Hezekiah encouraged the Levites for the skill they displayed as they served the Lord. So for seven days, the celebration continued. Peace offerings were sacrificed, and the people confessed their sins to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Verse 23, Extra Festival Days. The entire assembly then decided to continue the festival another seven days, so they celebrated joyfully for another week. King Hezekiah gave the people 1,000 bulls and 7,000 sheep for offerings. And the officials donated 1,000 bulls and 10,000 sheep. Meanwhile, many more priests purified themselves. The entire assembly of Judah rejoiced, including the priests, the Levites, all who came from the land of Israel, the foreigners who came to the festival, and all those who lived in Judah. There was great joy in the city, for Jerusalem had not seen a celebration like this one since the days of Solomon, King David's son. Then the Levitical priest stood and blessed the people, and God heard them from his holy dwelling in heaven. Oh, deep breath there. I love that. God heard the people from his holy dwelling in heaven. And, and just think, the God-man you know, came to this earth in the form of Jesus, the Christ, Right? So we could we could take on his character, his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, you know, and and we can be like him. I mean it's it's just mind blowing to think um that Jesus was obedient to death for you and for me. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for those who have listened today to the scriptures. I pray for a blessing over their lives. I pray for breakthroughs and things that they're hoping for and have been praying for will come to pass quickly because your perfect will is set for their lives. You know the beginning and the end, Father God. And I'm asking for you to... um anoint each of the listeners today, Lord Jesus. Um, they belong to you and your plan is perfect. May you triumph over their lives, Lord Jesus, and give them the confidence and the assurance that you are there all day long with each of the You Can Heal family today. I thank you for them all. Have a great weekend, everybody. We pray these things in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Always remember, true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. We'll be back tomorrow. Oh, and remember, if, um, if you're listening to this <laughs> in 2023, this Saturday we're having our group coaching call at 1015. So you can look on the community page for the link to join us there and spend some time together. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye.